What is Marxism, Leninism, Maoism, or MLM? MLM is Marxism, but we have to distinguish ourselves because there are many types of Marxism. We have Marxists who simply haven't updated their analysis of the world, sticking to the perspective of the old world. We call them Orthodox Marxists. We have Marxist Leninists who claim the name but ultimately have taken a revisionist route. Essentially, they sided with the revisionists during the revisionist and anti revisionist split in the revolutionary period of the 1960s and 1970s. We also have Marxist Leninists, anti revisionists, who still hold true the principles of Marxism Leninism, but also do not recognize Maoism as the third and highest stage of Marxism. We have lots of love for these comrades and would still organize with them. But we also have Trotskyists, and well, nobody really cares about them. And even in the MLM world, we have Third Worldist Maoists, Gonzaloist Maoists, etc. So there are many deviations of Marxism. But for those who are interested in the theory in which powerful revolutionary movements in China, Peru, Nepal, India, Turkey, and the Philippines, and many other places around the world have used and are using today to guide them towards an international proletarian revolution, this video will focus on that theory, Marxism, Leninism, Maoism. Before we dissect the principles of each stage of Marxism, I want to provide some context to the progression of each stage, as the theory is based on the material conditions of the time it was developed. This is actually the first step in understanding Marxism. In short, Marxism was developed in the capitalist era of what is called free competition, developed by Karl Marx and Frederick Engels. Leninism was developed in the era of imperialism, a new and higher stage of capitalism by Vladimir Lenin and Joseph Stalin. Maoism was developed in the modern era of capitalism, developed by Mao Zedong. Each stage represents both a continuity and rupture from the previous stage. This means that some aspects of the previous stage were continued and developed further, while other parts were proven incorrect and therefore dropped. Marxists only keep the universal principles of each stage to be used in the next stage of development. In each stage of development, there has also been successful revolutions tied to them. Some theorists may refer to these points of history as world historical revolutions, meaning that these revolutions had a significant impact on the world, pushing the class struggle forward in qualitative leaps. For Marxism, the Paris Commune of 1871 proved to the world that the proletariat could indeed overthrow the bourgeoisie. For Leninism, the Russian October Revolution of 1917 proved to the world that a socialist state could be established and built upon. For Maoism and the Chinese Revolution of 1949, along with the Great Proletarian Cultural Revolution initiated in May of 1966, proved to the world that the class struggle continued under a socialist state and was the furthest development towards communism. Another lens in which to understand the progression of each stage is to see the development of capitalist imperialism. In the time of Marx and Engels, capitalism developed mostly in Western Europe, of course through the exploitation of the rest of the world, mainly slavery and colonialism, but as this relatively new economic system rose to new levels, Marx and Engels analyzed this misappropriated wealth produced by the socialized labor of the vast numbers of the working people across various industries of which these workers were denied any control of the productive system, the tools, and the resources that they used to produce the commodities and this wealth. These workers even lost their own labor power. Through this exploitation and oppression, Marx and Engels gave capitalism a close and systematic study. 
they found that the only way to eliminate this oppressive relationship and condition is for the working class, the proletariat and its allies, to unite, overthrow, and then seize and exercise power over the productive system and for all other institutions against the bourgeoisie until all social oppression is eliminated. This is what is meant by a proletarian revolution. In the meantime, capitalism expanded to Eastern Europe, including Russia, where Vladimir Lenin, just like Marx and Engels, gave a close and systematic study of these developments and expansion of capital. Lenin developed a comprehensive understanding of this evolving system, the world forces within it, and the organizational forms the proletariat must take to defeat it. Lenin advanced Marxism in each of its principal areas, which came to be known as Marxism-Leninism. In China, Mao, also an apt student of Marx, Engels, Lenin, and Stalin, proved to be the third world's most advanced revolutionary leader and Marxist-Leninist strategist. He expanded Marxist-Leninist theory to liberation struggles in the predominantly peasant third world countries. Mao also expanded Marxist-Leninist theory in the area of continuing the class struggle under socialism as well as applying the mass line to revolutionary struggle and maintaining the working class integrity of the revolutionary party and the socialist state. Essentially, Mao was fighting back against revisionism. His contributions led to the development of Marxism-Leninism-Maoism. So, Let's go over the principles of each stage of Marxism. There's another component to this progression I need to clarify. Karl Marx wasn't a Marxist, as it didn't really exist until either later on in his life or even afterwards. Some claim that Marxism didn't really exist until Lenin's time. This is because there was a struggle between various groups in defining Marxism. There was a shallow understanding of Marxism until theorists, writers, organizers, philosophers, over time, settled the question, formalizing the concepts and principles of Marxism. Then, Vladimir Lenin wasn't a Leninist. He identified as a Marxist. Marxism-Leninism wasn't formalized until several years after Lenin's death. Joseph Stalin wrote a book in 1924 after Lenin died called Foundations of Leninism, helping to conceptualize the principles. But of course, there was a struggle over defining Leninism. This struggle wasn't settled until the Chinese Communist Party in the 1930s published an article declaring long live Marxism-Leninism, where they actually put the theory into practice, testing it out, and confirming its principles. And of course, Mao Zedong didn't call himself a Maoist, but a Marxist-Leninist. Towards the end of Mao's life, various groups around the world began to use the term Marxist-Leninist Mao Zedong thought. And again, there was a struggle over the confirmation of this next stage of Marxism. Most Maoists agree that Maoism wasn't fully realized until the late 1980s and early 1990s. In understanding the full development of Maoism, we must understand the history of the Revolutionary International Movement, otherwise known as the RIM but only in sequence with the developments from the Communist Party of Peru. So first, the RIM was made up of several revolutionary communist organizations who continued armed struggle towards an international proletarian revolution. This is important to recognize and understand because the Soviet Union and China transformed into a revisionist entity reversing all of the socialist and communist successes and eventually changing their direction towards capitalism. While this was happening, the RIM was still pushing forward for proletarian revolution towards socialism and communism. The RIM was established and declared in March of 1984, and here is just a short list of some of the parties who founded the RIM. One way to understand the concrete development of Maoism is to read the publications from RIM called A World to Win. 
A world to win tracks the historical development of these parties and thus the historical development of Marxism, Leninism, Maoism. Not by idolizing Mao Zedong, but by applying Marxist, Leninist, Mao Zedong thought to their own conditions, eventually establishing Maoism as the third and highest stage of Marxism. Through these struggles, the Communist Party of Peru was one of the leading parties to experiment, test, apply, establish, and declare Maoism. Many Maoists argue that it is through this sequence begun by the Communist Party of Peru and then later realized by the RIM that Maoism was fully developed. The process of this sequence occurred between the late 1980s and the early 1990s. Anything before this period is known as Marxism, Leninism, Mao Zedong thought. And so by the late 1980s, the Communist Party of Peru was pushing and showing that Maoism was the third highest stage. And in 1995, the RIM published a document called Long Live Marxism, Leninism, Maoism. In general, this has been the historical development of Marxism, Leninism, Maoism. This history represents the development of Marxism, which is the most concrete theory to guide us in our struggle towards liberation. This theoretical development contains the continuity and rupture of one stage to the next, and it helps us understand where Marxism stands today in the early 21st century. Moving forward, the principles of each stage of Marxism, Leninism, Maoism, outlined here, will be explained in detail with each principle as a standalone video. These videos are meant to be a supplement to your reading and understanding of the principles of MLM theory. We all must study and practice what we've learned. We must stand in continuity with the historical development of revolutionary proletarian struggle. As revolutionary communists dedicated to the emancipation of all socially oppressed people, it is our duty to remain principled, to stand with the oppressed, and to destroy the old world while creating a new one. Unite the many, defeat the few, red salute.